Kruskal's algorithm. The Kruskal's algorithm was discovered in 1956. In this algorithm, the edges of an undirected weighted graph are scanned one by one. At each step, an edge with the least weight is picked and added to the corresponding vertices of a graph. If an edge creates a cycle, it is dropped. The algorithm can be implemented by pursuing the following steps. Step 1. Remove all edges from graph. Step 2. Arrange edges in ascending order of the weights. Step 3. Pick the smallest edge and add it to graph. If the new edge creates a cycle, reject it. Step 4. Repeat step 3 until all vertices have been processed. The resulting subgraph, which may contain fewer edges, would be a minimum spanning tree. Consider, for example, the undirected graph shown in figure. The edges and the weight are tabulated in next figure. The action column shows whether an edge is added or dropped. This figure shows the minimum spanning tree built by using the Kruskal's algorithm. The thick lines represent the tree. The total path length of the tree is 10 plus 23 plus 30 plus 40 equal 103. Note that edges BD, AC, CE have been rejected because they form cycles when joined with other pre-selected edges. The edge BD, for example, is dropped because it produces a cycle with edges AB and AD, which are already selected to be the part of spanning tree. Kruskal's algorithm is classified as a greedy algorithm because it immediately selects an edge with the lowest weight. It is an efficient algorithm for building minimum spanning trees. It can be shown that for a graph with n vertices and m edges, the running time of Kruskal's algorithm is O m log n. Click the button to watch a visualization of Kruskal's algorithm and to print a trace. Prim's algorithm Prim's algorithm is an alternative method for creating minimum spanning tree. As the name implies, the algorithm was proposed by Robert Prim in 1957. Unlike the Kruskal's algorithm, which makes selection of edges, the Prim's algorithm picks vertices. Briefly, the algorithm proceeds as follows. Step 1. Select an arbitrary vertex. Mark it as visited. Step 2. Repeat steps 3 to 4 until all the nodes have been examined. Step 3. Find an unvisited vertex which is connected to any of the visited vertices and has the smallest weight. Step 4. If the edges do not form a cycle, add it to the tree and mark the selected vertex as visited. If the graph is not connected, then the algorithm would produce a spanning tree for the connected components of the graph. Consider, for example, the weighted graph shown in figure. We use Prim's algorithm to create the minimum spanning tree. The result of examining different vertices is shown in figure. The vertex A is selected as the initial vertex to be added to the tree. Figure shows the minimum spanning tree for the graph. The edges of the trees are shown in thick lines. If n is the number of vertices and m the number of edges, the Prim's algorithm has running time of O m plus n log n. Being a logarithmic, it is quite efficient. The Castor's algorithm We have already studied that a path matrix can be used to find the shortest distance between any pair of vertices in a directed weighted graph. The algorithm, however, 
does not provide the details of the shortest path between a given set of vertices. De Castres proposed an algorithm which generates a trace of the shortest path. The algorithm has many useful applications. For example, it can be applied to find the shortest driving distance between cities connected by road. De Castres algorithm works like the Prim's algorithm. It begins by selecting an arbitrary vertex and proceeds outward to cover all vertices. Unlike the Prim's algorithm, however, De Castro's algorithm repeatedly computes the distance between a source vertex and the vertex being examined and selects the sequence of edges which yields the smallest summation. This process is continued until all the vertices have been examined. By storing the information about the vertices and edges selected, it is possible to create the shortest path between any vertices. The implementation details of the De Castro's algorithm can vary depending on how the information pertaining to the vertices and edges is stored and updated at each step. Click the button to watch the working of De Castro's algorithm. The visualization also creates a trace of all steps involved and generates the shortest path between a selected pair of vertices. Topological sorting we have seen that vertices of a graph can be listed in several ways by using different traversal methods. A special arrangement of vertices of a directed graph without cycle is termed as topological order. In this arrangement, if an edge is directed from a vertex A to vertex B and an edge is directed from B to C, the list ABC is termed as topologically sorted list. Essentially, every successive vertex must follow a predecessor vertex in the sort order. In general, there can be several sort orders. For example, if there is a directed edge to C from both A and B, then the topological order can be with ABC or BAC. Topological sorting has several applications. For example, in certain course offering, some courses may be prerequisites for other courses. A sort order would list the order in which the courses can be taken. Another example of topological order is the scheduling of tasks that must be completed before others can be started, such as in an assembly line. There are several algorithms for performing topological sorting. In one simple method, a vertex which has no successor vertex is chosen. It is added to list and all edges that end at this vertex are deleted. This process is repeated on a next vertex that has no successor until all the vertices have been added to the list. The result is a sequence of vertices which would be in topological sorted order. Consider, for example, the directed graph shown in the figure. Note that it does not contain any cycle. We can apply the preceding algorithm to generate a topologically sorted list of the vertices. Since E has no successor vertices, we select E and add it to the list. Also, we delete the edges that terminate at E. At this stage, the list contains only E. Next, we choose D, which has no successor, and add it to the list. The edge terminating at D is deleted. Now, the list contains vertices D and E. Now, the vertex C has no successor. So, we choose C and add to the list, which now consists of vertices C, D, E. Since edges from B and A to C are deleted, we can select B and A and add them to the list. In this way, we end up with the list BA CDE, which is the desired topological sort order. Figure diagrammatically shows sequence of vertices with broken line. 
The edges of the original sample graph are also pictured.